Today we turn to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his garments became glistening, intensely white, as no fuller on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking to Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is well that we are here. Let us make three booths, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were exceedingly afraid. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And suddenly looking around, they saw, no longer saw anyone with them, but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man should have risen from the dead. This is the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. Today's Transfiguration Sunday. Christ is transfigured in front of his disciples. Or was he? You see, it becomes a question of whether or not it's the disciples who are transfigured into finally recognizing who they are dealing with. Because Jesus had never made any bones about who he was. He was the Son of God. We see that time and time again in our examples of Scripture. And then when we come to the mountain, because they see him with Moses and with Elijah, maybe he looks a little bit different. Have you ever had that experience? Am I the only one that's had an experience like that where I'm looking at something and then, you know, a different paradigm or somebody says something and I look at it differently? Our paradigms continually shift in our lives. We're not the same person today that we were yesterday. <coughs> or if we are, then we've got something to, to look at, right? Jesus, though, is on the mountaintop with the disciples. As you know, in Scripture, going on top of the mountain is a big deal. Going on top of the mountain is a place of reflection. It's a place of prayer. It's a place of acknowledgement. It's a place of transfiguration. Because who else went on the mountaintop and was transformed and came about glowing in white? Moses. Moses came down from the mountain after receiving the Ten Commandments, and he was so brilliant from being in the presence of God that they had to shroud him. You don't get quite that same distinction with Jesus here in the Gospel of Mark. It is mainly more an acknowledgement of the disciples to say, hey, we saw you with Moses and with Elijah. And they were terrified. Because though they had been walking with Jesus, the Son of God, Moses and Elijah to the Hebrew people are the Jesus to us today. That makes sense, right? Kind of like a rock star all of a sudden showing up in the church. And going, whoa. The recognition was there. And it's only when you see someone with another person that sometimes you recognize how great they are. But then it changes and it shifts. Because not only have they finally recognized Jesus for who he is. He then asked them to not tell anyone. He says, don't tell anyone until the Son of Man should have risen from the dead. This is one of those hints about what is to come. We know the end of the story. We know Jesus 
must rise from the dead. But they did not. So it comes down to these words for the disciples. Can you keep a secret? How many of us struggle with keeping secrets? It's hard, isn't it? Or do we have that person that you can tell anything to and you know they won't pass it on? Like if somebody tells you something, I don't know about you, but I automatically tell Chad. <coughs> it doesn't matter. I mean, it might be a, a secret, but it's like, wait, hold on. Can I? But like, Chad's like my other, like my 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 person. Like, if I can't tell him, who? What do I do? How many of you journal those things? If you don't have somebody else to tell. How many of us will say a secret out loud just to feel better about, like, processing it? This is something huge to process. The disciples are terrified. They are afraid. They have been not just in the presence of God. Not only do they hear the voice of God, they see this person who they have been working with, walking with, staying with traveling with, transformed into someone they no longer knew before their very eyes. It would be like if you saw, if you knew Clark Kent's identity from the beginning and saw him step into the phone booth and whip off the glasses and become Superman, and you knew it all was happening right then and there. of God on a person is amazing. The description here is one which you go, huh. There's a reason why the color white is so symbolic of our faith. Remember they described Jesus' outer garments as white, that no fuller who would, who would be like a person who could wash, you know, did the wash, that sort of thing. Um, that no fuller could make it that brilliant. It's like that white tablecloth that you don't want to put anything on because you know you will never get it that color again. I've got one. But it's more than that. You see, this is beyond our human understanding of the person in front of us. So what does that mean to us here and now? Because we don't have Jesus in front of us transforming into a brilliant white robe. We don't have Moses and Elijah on either side of us telling us things, advising us. So can you keep a secret? Because the secret is that we do have someone. We might not have realized it. Look around you. Literally, look around you. I know I make you do this a lot. It's no secret that who you surround yourself by helps transform you into the person you are. We learn that from a very young age, right? Your friends are who make you some of who you are. Your reputation, who you hang out with, or if you don't hang out with people. Your identity is wrapped up in other people. Perhaps it's hard to hear. Perhaps it's frightening when you think about who you're sitting next to. But our identity being wrapped up 
in others is something that's intrinsic to the identity of Christ. You see, Christ's identity was so wrapped up in God that his transformation is not just something external, it is something internal. And it's a realization that the disciples make at this point in Mark. They finally know who their friend is. And they can't tell anyone. It's hard. But we're not the disciples. You see, we can tell people who Jesus is. We don't have to keep that a secret anymore. I found it amusing when Emma's asking Sophia, because I knew the answer the minute you asked the question, do you know what a secret is? No. Think about it. They warn us. They send us, they send us home from preschool at like three and four years old. They send us a note. Be careful what you say in front of your children, because they will tell us at school. <laughs> It's the truth, right? So what changes between the ages of three and four and now? You see, the reason I love children's moments so much is because it reminds me consciously of where my faith should be. God with no reservation, no inhibition. And yet as adults, we're like the disciples. We're terrified when we see it in front of us. Because the truth is the disciples did keep this secret. They didn't go out and proclaim the good news of who they were dealing with. we do the same. No matter how many times we see Christ in front of us, we don't tell too many people. We might do it sometimes if we're in like God's speak time, like in church. Or if we're over in the fellowship hall and we'll be like, oh man, you know, it is good. God is good. We don't tell who we know. See, we're past the point of Jesus asking us to keep his identity a secret. We're past that. And yet we still act like the disciples, afraid to share what we've seen. I'm not saying that it's easy to explain. I mean, honestly, if somebody literally did a transfiguration, transformation in front of you, how would you explain it? We don't have to. You see, we and how we and how we see Jesus are not living the lives of the disciples. We're living our lives. So some of how we see Jesus in our lives is exactly how we talk about it. How many of us end our days with, I saw God today like this? We don't. And it's not something to make you feel bad. It's something to make a realization that somehow between our childhood into adulthood, we lose the freedom of letting it all out. Some of that is respect. We respect other people around us, right? We respect their opinion, and we respect that they might not be as churchy, or religious as we are. So out of respect 
for others, we hold our own respect for ourselves in. We put our relationship with God as a secret that should not be told. I may have, that's not the reason, but it seems to me that in this world today, we are more conscious of not offending somebody by our faith than living our faith. Should we? 